If you want some tips and tricks on how to install LP Smart Side Siding, you've come to the right channel. I'm going to share with you some of the small tips and tricks that I've discovered over the years working with Smart Side. So, whether you're a first time installer that's never installed it before and you're trying to game plan, or maybe you're in the middle of a project and you're struggling with it, or maybe you've uh, installed quite a few jobs and you just want to get more efficient and provide a better end result. Follow along. I'm going to try to be as detailed as I can on these instructions and I'll include some videos with it. Hope you enjoy. Set your nail depth to where it sets the nail proud. What am I talking about? Well, whether you're installing the shakes, the lap siding, or the board and batten, you're most likely going to have some exposed fasteners. There's no way of getting around this. The worst thing that you can do is overdrive that fastener. If you overdrive the fastener, LP's installation instructions tell you to come back, seal up that hole with some caulk or some sealant, and then drive another nail. That is not a fun experience to have to do that, especially if you don't catch it quick enough. The best thing that you can do, it's what we do on all of our installations, we set our nail guns to where it drives the nail slightly proud of the material. Then we have to go back and tap each nail with a hammer. That might sound like a lot of work, but it actually takes a lot longer to come back and seal up those overdriven fasteners with some caulk. Generally, we can set the depth of our nail uh, along with the pressure on our compressor to where it sets the nail head flush or slightly proud. Flush is great because then you don't even have to come back and tap it with your hammer and, and make it flush, right? But if it's slightly proud, it only takes a second to go back and tap that nail. It takes a lot longer to get the caulk gun and make that caulk look good if you've accidentally overdriven that fastener. So uh, that's a tip for you. Make sure you set your nails a little bit proud or flush. You do not want to overdrive those fasteners. It's just gonna cost you time. And it's a bad look too, especially like in trim where it's exposed and you've got that overdriven fastener where you've caulked it, you're gonna be able to see that. So there's a tip for you. Here's a quick and easy little tip for you. Anytime you have a window like this, you have to put this Z flashing or window flashing drip edge, whatever you want to call it, drip flashing above the window casing, if you will, or, or above the window. So the problem with this is LP requires a three eighth, three eighths gap between the bottom of the window flashing, this piece right here, and the bottom of the uh, siding. Hope I'm saying that right. Three eighths gap right here. So three eighths of this is, is, is exposed. So I've got this little bit hanging down right here and I need to get rid of it, but I want to get rid of it to where the reason I need to get rid of some of it is because it's going to be exposed. So if I put my siding on and I leave that three eighths gap, some of this hydro gap, we're, that's what we're using for our house wrap, hydro gap SA, some of it is going to be exposed and it's not going to look good. You want to see this blue color matched drip cap. So here's how I get rid of a nice even amount that will hide real quick and easy. I've got my square here, I've got my knife, utility knife. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that square as an edge, a straight edge, and I'm going to run that square along the top of that and cut at the same time and I'll show you what result we end up with. Might have to cut a little bit more there, but you can see how real quick and easy that is. That's thick right there because I got a couple pieces coming in together. See that? Nice and easy. Now I'm gonna have to flash a little bit of this over here. Some guys will take their window flashing and they'll fold this down or they'll fold that up. And I think that's a good practice, but um, we only had this exact amount of flashing for this window, so that just wasn't possible. But uh, that is a good practice to do that. But I'll come over here with this and there we go. Now I can roll this tape and, and get that bedded down into that flashing. Now my window is protected and this can be exposed with that 3 8 gap and it doesn't have this hydro gap in the way. So that's just one quick, quick and dirty little tip for you there. Use Sashco sealants. 
for all of your caulking joints on LP Smart Side. I can't stress this enough. If you order pre-finished siding like from Diamond Coat or maybe you're ordering the expert finish directly from LP, most likely they're not going to send you Sashco sealants. They're gonna send you OSI Quad or DAP Dynaflex. Now, both of those sealants are good, but they're so hard to use and they will not last as long as Sashco sealants. They're a good product, but they're not gonna last as long as this, okay? UV rays will break down OSI Quad really fast, and so will uh, Dynaflex. UV rays are gonna break those uh, two sealants down a lot faster. With Big Stretch, this is a water cleanup sealant, so it's easier to use, and you can tool Big Stretch. It comes in a wide variety of colors, and if the color that you have selected for your pre-finished siding, if, if Big Stretch isn't uh, one of those colors that's gonna match, Sashco makes this exact color. Now this is a really unique sealant because you can actually take that touch-up paint that they sent you with your pre-finished siding, you can follow the instructions that comes with this little kit, and you put some of that uh, touch-up paint in the sealant, shake it up, let it sit for 30 minutes, and you have an exact matching caulk color to your pre-finished siding. It's a game changer, and it's got the same um, attributes as this Big Stretch. It is, let's see, Big Stretch is an ASTM C920 sealant, okay? You have to have that classification with LP Smart Side. What does all that mean? Basically, it means that the caulk's gonna expand and contract um, over time. We know that LP Smart Side, they require you to have that 3 16 joint everywhere it abuts another piece. That's because it's gonna take on a little bit of moisture and it could, it could expand. You have to have a sealant that is willing to move with the siding. Nobody does it better than Sashco and nobody's been doing it longer than Sashco. I've been using Big Stretch specifically for a very long time. And since I've been installing the pre-finished LP, we've been using the exact color. It works so well. And there's no better color match than matching the color that they send with you for the touch-up paint. Think about that for a minute. So my big tip for you, use Sashco sealants. I've got a little extra video here I'll include of how I uh, tool the sealant. Now you can use this for quad as well if you are absolutely not going to use Big Stretch or uh, Exact Color. Maybe you've already ordered all of your uh, siding and you have to use what they're sending you with it. I've got a little tip for you there too. What I like to do is I like to tape each side of that joint. That 3 16 joint, it's pretty large. Why do I tape it? Well, because most likely if you're using LP, you're using the cedar texture. Um, the smooth texture, it's not as critical, but the cedar texture, if you get a little bit of extra caulk or sealant in those cedar grooves, it's gonna be extremely difficult to get it out. Doesn't look bad as whenever you caulk it, it doesn't look that bad, but when you walk away from it and that sealant is dried, you'll see that dried sealant in all those little grooves of that texture it is not a good look down the road, especially when that sealant starts collecting dust or debris before you pressure wash it. It'll show up as you know an over tool on that siding, and it's just not a good look. So I like to tape both sides, then take my putty knife and tool that off, pull the tape. You have a perfect joint after you do that. It does not take that much longer, especially if you get used to it. We've done every house like that that we've installed LP on. We use that tip all the time because we've gotten so efficient and fast at it. Um, I'd go so far as to say we would be almost as fast as someone that would not use the tape. So get used to it and it won't be that big of a deal. But use Sashco sealants on your LP Smart Side install. I can't recommend these products enough. Avoid warranty situations. If you're installing LP Smart Side, you need to be familiar with the installation instructions because there's a lot of things that will pop up as a warranty issue if you're not familiar with it. Remember, this system is not like Hardy. This system is not like vinyl siding. It is unique. You have to follow the installation instructions to get the LP warranty. Now, one thing that's really nice about LP is they are a no BS company. What does that mean? It means that if you install something incorrectly over here, they're not going to dock the rest of the home 
for that warranty situation. They are only going to nullify that one piece of trim or siding that you've installed incorrectly. So it's not a deal breaker if you install something that's not up to their warranty standards. It's not going to void the rest of the home. But we want to avoid warranty situations if at all possible. One of those situations that comes up from time to time are the ground clearances. A lot of homes, especially in the hot, humid south, they're built slab on grade. That means they're really close to the ground. So your siding has to start close to the ground. Well, how are you gonna get out of that situation if LP tells you that your course of siding has to be at least six inches above grade? How do you get out of that situation? You use different materials. You gotta mix and match. You gotta think outside the box. Now, one thing that I love about Diamond Coat, Diamond Coat is a pre-finisher for LP Smart Side. A lot of people don't realize that. They think Diamond Coat is a different brand of siding. Diamond Coat takes LP Smart Side, they pre-finish it, they modify it, they do some wonderful things with it. And one of the items that they sell is a starter board. It's made out of boral, which is, I believe, made out of fly ash, and it is basically rot-proof. The stuff will not rot. You can start with that starter board that will get your siding six inches above grade and then you can rock and roll with the rest of your LP smart side you don't have to worry about running into a warranty situation well you say I can't get boral in my area and I'm not using diamond coat what else could I use PVC PVC is a wonderful application for this as well use a piece of five quarter PVC trim board that is readily accessible at most of the big box stores or lumber yards use PVC as a starter board, get your six inches above grade and then start with your LP. There's another way to do it and it's durable. PVC is very durable and of course it doesn't rot either. So there's a quick tip for you. Use other materials to get yourself out of a warranty situation. All right, Special K bonus tip. We're going to try to make a seam disappear. So what are we doing right here, Kay? A little bit of caulk. A little bit of what kind of caulk? Well, what kind you think? <laughs> no brainer. So we got this situation where um, soffit isn't quite wide enough, so we need to extend it a little bit. So Special K is going to show us the best way to make a seam disappear on LP Smart Side soffit that's been pre-finished by Diamond Coat. And here is the pass load finish nailer. I still see it, Aaron. I still see it. You still see it? You need a little more sealant on there? A little more. All right. Let me grab it. Hang this back up. A little more sealant. You need some squeeze out is what you're saying. Yeah, that's right. You need some squeeze out, man. Here we go. Got a little squeeze out there now, don't you? Uh-huh. Okay. 18 gauge pass load finish nailer. Uh-huh. Now, wipe that excess squeeze out and off. I think I'm gonna have to come up there and look at that. The people wanna see it at home. Wow. You know, that seam really did disappear. You might be onto something there. It's a big stretch market as seam, seam concealer. They should if they don't. Look at there. Let's get you a close up here. See if I can, oh yeah. Hey, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So there you go, there's your Special K bonus tip of the day. Use the accessories that are available from LP and Diamond Coat. A lot of people don't know about these accessories. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the rigid blocks. Let's say, for instance, you have a light on either side of your garage door. What are you going to mount that light to? One of these accessory blocks. They're not cheap, but they look so much better, and it makes the installation go so much faster. 
Uh, Diamond Coat sells them in a lot of different varieties. They sell them in a oversized block. They sell them in a smaller block. They even sell UL electrical blocks that you can mount a receptacle in, or they sell a plain block with a hole in the middle of it for a hose bib. Let's suppose your plumber has already installed the plumbing before the siding and you've got this hose bib sticking out. They sell what's called a split block, or you could even use that for a line set on like a ductless mini split or an HVAC system. Those blocks are available for a reason. They make your installation much easier and it's gonna look so much better if you will use those blocks that are at your disposal. Pay a little bit more up front, look at how good it's going to look years down the road and it's gonna make your life so much easier if you'll just spend that extra money right up front. Use those accessory blocks from LP and from Diamond Coat. All right, so we've got a crazy situation here where we really need to put a freeze board up here. There wasn't a freeze board in the past, but we were using a different type of soffit. Now we're switching to LP and we've got this unsightly gap and it would look horrible if you caulked that, okay? Caulking that against brick too, nightmare situation. So we need to put some freeze board up here. And what we're using is some five quarter by four pre-finished by Diamond Coat LP Smart Side trim boards, okay? How are you going to attach that trim board to brick? Now, this is one of those things that LP is not going to probably approve of, uh, but you do what you gotta do, right? And I mean, we've got a two foot overhang here. It's never gonna see water unless it's from the pressure washer, right? So we're not really worried about, you know, wood touching masonry or any of that stuff. Never really been a big believer in that anyways. We've never had a problem, so. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how we're going to attach this freeze board to this brick wall, okay? Bear with me. All right, the first thing that we've gotta do, we gotta get the freeze up here. We wanna make sure we're drilling into brick. So we're gonna get it up here, we're gonna mark our locations for our brick, okay? So I've got just a regular drill with a standard wood bit. Here comes our freeze now. You coming around that way? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now that we've got our holes drilled to the appropriate size, we're using these anchors. These are fantastic little anchors. So you just gotta hammer these bad boys in nice and lightly, love taps. Just little love taps. Don't wanna knock the brick loose, that's right. We've got these little trim screws, right? So little trim screw, exterior grade. That's what we're gonna drill into that anchor, right? So, follow along. All right, so every brick, we're putting a nice helping blob of adhesive. Nice big blob of adhesive. That will actually give that trim board a little bit of standoff off that masonry if you're worried about, uh, what do they call that, capillary action or something like that? I don't know, crap action. Crap action, that's it. Okay. Same way. Go ahead. Ready? Yeah. Just launch it in. All right, go for it. I'm going to start with the screw here. Look at that. 
suck it right in. Now, all we have is those small holes that we can putty, finish paint, caulker joint. We're done. Pre-assemble everything that's possible. Window trims, door trims, even around your garage. Pre-assemble it if you can. A lot of times you're going to have to terminate at a trim connection like an outside corner or a door with your lap siding, board and batten, whatever the case may be. If you have the time, go ahead and pre-assemble it. It's actually going to save you time in my opinion because you're not going to have to sit there and mess with those joints lining up. doesn't matter if you miter it or straight cut it. LP actually wants you to straight cut it. Sometimes we miter, sometimes we straight cut. It just depends on the application. But a lot of times, more often than not, we will pre-assemble if at all possible. Now, there's a few different methods that you can use to pre-assemble. Biscuit joints are a great thing. If you don't have a biscuit joiner, go to Lowe's, get a Craig jig. They're cheap. Pocket screws from the back side and pre-assemble all of your casing for around windows, your doors. Pre-assemble all of that trim. That trim is so expensive, you want it to look good. LP is not a cheap product. And if you pre-assemble it, not only is it gonna be easier to install when that time comes, but it's also going to look good for years to come. You're not gonna to have to worry about those joints opening up over time. So pre-assemble if at all possible. Another way that you can do it, this is kind of a little bonus tip here. If you don't, don't wanna buy a pocket jig you know, from Craig, and if you don't have a biscuit joiner, there is another way that you can do it. So if you align your head casing with your leg and you don't have any way of pre-assembling it that you can think of, buy a long screw, pre-drill down through the top and drive a screw through it. That's an easy way to do it because guess what? You're gonna have to have a head flashing over the top of it anyways and it, from the bottom you can stick some sealant in, in those holes. Nobody's ever gonna see it if you pre-drill it in the correct orientation. So pre-drill your head casing from the top, run you a long five or six inch screw down through there to tie your leg to your head casing. Do the same on the bottom. Put some caulk or sealant in those holes. The head flashing's gonna cover it on top and you'll never see it from the bottom. There's you another pre-assembly little tip for you if you don't wanna buy a Craig jig or a biscuit joiner. All right, so here's a situation that we have where we don't have a splicer block here. That's a problem. LP tells us that this soffit could sag over time without some sort of um, cleat or catcher block here. Now, what they want us to do is they want us to install some framing here to attach the soffit to. I don't have time for that and I have nothing to attach to back on the brick wall side. So this is how we get out of that situation. It might not be what LP likes, but it's worked for us all these years. I take a scrap piece and I cut it to length and put it up in there. But here's, here's the trick to it. I take some construction adhesive. Okay. And I'm going to give it a generous bead. Generous bead of construction adhesive. Whichever flavor you prefer. I like this Gorilla Heavy Duty stuff. It's, I think it's pretty good. It's not bad. And I'm going to put this up in here and I'm going to squash that down in there. Just like so. Now I'm going to take my 16 gauge Paz Load Finish Nailer and I'm going to pop it pop it and pop it then I'm going to bend the nails over so that my electrical wiring doesn't catch on them because I'm using way too long of a fastener because I'm lazy and I don't want to go back to the trailer to get a shorter one shorter set of nails so anyways now when we put up our next sheet before we do that I will take some more construction adhesive I will apply it to the cleat the catcher whatever you want to call it Put up our next piece of soffit and I will shoot some more finished nails through it. No problem. Obviously I won't be able to bend the next ones down so I need to go change to a different size nail. But you get the point, right? Install soffit in unconventional areas. What do I mean by that? Well, how do you finish off a bird box or a pork shop as some people call it? It's the little transition, the little return 
at the end of your house by the eave where it connects to the gable end or the rake of your house? How do you finish that off? Some guys will take the fascia material, which is four quarter thick, and run it down the rake, and then they'll place another piece of four quarter, which is a waste of material most of the time, right underneath it. And you've got this unsightly crack where the two are meeting, and oftentimes they're not flush with one another. So they'll caulk that crack. It's just not a good look to me. And it can be a potential place where water could leak in. What I like to do is I like to take a piece of soffit and run underneath that fascia board that comes down your rake. This creates a really nice shadow line or reveal, if you will, and you don't ever have to worry about water penetration in that bird box. It's an area that I researched extensively when I started using LP SmartSide, and I couldn't find anybody that would expose the pictures of their bird boxes or returns, whatever you want to call it. I couldn't find any pictures of that. I couldn't find anybody else that had used LP SmartSide at the time, so I pretty much had to come up with some sort of solution on my own for that area. They don't detail that area in the installation instructions, and I haven't really seen anyone else on YouTube or social media detail that area. So I started using Soffit, and I have found it has worked out very well for me. So use soffit in unconventional areas. Another place you might use it is in a brick home. We've recently been working on a home that is partially brick exterior and partially siding. We've replaced all of the siding with LP SmartSide and they wanted it to match as much as we could the rest of the house with the, the SmartSide, the new siding. Well, they have these windows that are encased in brick. Now, LP probably won't warranty this situation, and the clients understand that. But we took soffit, we ripped down strips, we painted it up real nice, caulked it in, and we have LP Smart Side trim now around those windows. We couldn't use a four quarter material or a uh, five quarter material around those windows. We had to use something thinner so that it didn't protrude past the brick, and we used soffit for that area and it worked out really well. The clients are very happy and it looks great. So you have to think outside the box. You have to kind of get creative with certain situations when you're working with LP. Sometimes you have to inform the client. We've got a decision to make here. If you want to do this, warranty's not going to cover it. Now, am I worried at all about that LP touching that brick? Not at all. I've never seen LP fail. I've got a piece of LP out in my yard that's been there for over five years now, and it still looks like the day it's been sitting on the ground that I put it there. So, you know, I'm just not really concerned. It is an extremely durable product. So there's a few tips for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. I do have one more tip that I'm gonna throw in there. If you have the opportunity, go check out the Cruise Brothers on Instagram. If you don't know who the Cruz Brothers are, they work for LP and they do educational training courses for LP SmartSide all over the United States. They do some virtual sessions, but they also will come to your town in person and teach you some very cool techniques how to install LP smart side siding. I attended their class back in 2016 in Nashville. I still remember it. I still use a lot of the tips and tricks that they uh, provided me with. Great guys, go check them out. Um, can't recommend that class enough. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you picked up a couple of uh, good tips and tricks from me. Stay tuned for another video coming soon. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.